Hey, yo, what is happening, people? I came across a thought experiment recently that I wanted to share with you guys. It's from the folks at clearerthinking.org. This is a website that was founded in 2012 by a mathematician and entrepreneur named Spencer Greenberg. The purpose of the website, as they state, is to help people avoid thinking traps and make improved decisions to better achieve the goals they value most. So the thought experiment I came across from them is called The Poison Cactus Vampire Ward Problem. What's your ethical intuition? This experiment is designed to capture ethical intuitions in a number between 0 and 100. After you come up with your number, you're supposed to compare it to a list of common solutions and see which line of ethical reasoning is closest to your own. Obviously, there are no right or wrong answers here, only your answer. I do have this experiment linked in the show notes, so if you want to read along with me, you can. Or if you just want to stop listening to me and read it for yourself, by all means, please do. So we'll start with the actual experiment. It's very brief. And then I'll get into my answer to it and what I think it means. Here we go. Suppose there are two villages, Parvatas and Amplus, which are a five-minute walk apart. Once per month, when the full moon is out, all men, women, children, and wizards of the two villages must meet to conduct the vampire ward ritual. The ritual requires all people from both villages to chant a magical incantation at the same time in the same place in one of the two villages. Hence, Either the people from Parvatas must all go to Amplus, or the people from Amplus must all go to Parvatas in order to complete the ritual. If the vampire ward ritual is not conducted, vampires will descend on both towns and eat all of their occupants. Unfortunately, despite the very short distance between the villages, a painful prickly poisonous cactus patch lies on the only passable footpath between them. Any person who passes through the cactus patch gets poisoned, which is not serious, but feels terrible. The poison feeling is terrible to all people, regardless of how many times they've experienced it before. But due to genetic differences, the people of Parvatas have an experience that is three times more terrible from the poison than the people of Amplus. There are 100 people in Parvatas, and 200 people in Amplus. Now the question for you is, from an ethical perspective, in what percentage of months should the people of Parvatas have to cross the cactus patch to get to Amplus, rather than the people of Amplus crossing the cactus patch to get to Parvatas? Now that's the end of the thought experiment, so before you decide on your percentage, there are some rules to consider. The cactus patch is impossible to clear away given the current state of Parvatas and Amplus technology. The population sizes of the two villages stay constant. Monthly meetings cannot take place anywhere besides one of those two villages. The villages cannot be moved. Assume the people of both villages are equally morally deserving and equally wealthy per capita. And no armor, bridges, vehicles, or poison antidotes are allowed. So, to recap, we're trying to determine in terms of percentage of months how often the people of Parvatas have to cross the poison cactus patch to get to Amplus, keeping in mind that the people of Parvatas have an experience that is three times more terrible from the cactus poison than the people of Amplus, and there are 100 people in Parvatas and 200 people in Amplus. So you're looking for a number from 0 to 100. For example, if you chose 50 you'd want the people of Parvatas to walk to Amplus six months out of the year, and the people of Amplus walk to Parvatas the other six months, knowing that when Parvatas walks over to Amplus, they're suffering three times more than when Amplus walks to Parvatas. So the number I chose was one-third, or 33.3%, which means the people of Parvatas who suffer more and have fewer people are walking across the poison cactus patch four times a year, and the people of Amplus, 
who suffer less, are walking across it eight times. Now, the experiment lists some common solutions, and if you didn't pick one of the exact numbers they list, you're supposed to find the one closest to your number. Now, my number is essentially in the middle of two of their listed solutions of 25 and 40%. I don't know how 40% is even a number they list because that's 4.8 months out of 12 and they're only walking once a month, so I'm not sure how that jives mathematically, perhaps over the course of many years, but whatever. Technically, 33.3 is closer to 40 than 25, but it's close enough that I'm going to share both solutions with you. We'll start with the 40% which they labeled as the equal total group burden solution. And here's how they describe that. In this solution, rather than each person sharing the same amount of the burden of suffering, we could have the two groups each have the same total amount of suffering. If Parvatas crosses 40% of the time, then that group's total suffering per meeting is the equivalent of 120. And they get this from an equation by taking 40%, 0.40, times the amount of people in Parvatas, which is 100, times 3, which is the amount of suffering they do in comparison to Amplus, which is a, it's a 3 to 1 ratio. So you have, again, 0.4 for 40% times 100 for the amount of people times 3 for the suffering units, and you get 120. Now compared to Amplus, that number is the same, also 120. They, so they have the same amount of total suffering per meeting. You take the other 60% that Amplus is walking, times that by their amount of people, 200, times their suffering unit, which is 1, 0.6 times 200 times 1 is 120. So with this solution, the total sum of suffering experienced by each group is the same as what the other group experiences. And now the 25% solution, which they labeled the individual equal suffering solution. And here's how they describe that. In this solution, each person shares an identical amount of the burden by suffering an equal amount as every other person. If the Parvatas villagers have to cross the patch 25% of the time, then by making the crossing once every four months, each member of the Parvatas village experiences three total units of suffering. And they get that by multiplying the 25%, 0.25, times four, which is the amount of times they're walking, times their three, which is their units of suffering, So 0.25 times 4 times 3 is 3. The Amplus villagers each experience 3 units of suffering as well by crossing the cactus patch 3 months out of every 4. So you take their percentage, 0.75 times 4 times 1, their unit of suffering, and you get 3. 0.75 times 4 times 1 is 3. So each person suffers equally, regardless of which group they are in. So what I draw from this about myself and my own ethics is that I see both the microcosm, in this case the individual, and the macrocosm, in this case the group, as equal to each other. There might be an as above, so below reference in here. But in terms of this thought experiment, each individual and each group to me must suffer at an equal level. Which, if you know me, would make sense because I find balance to be of great significance to one's quality of life. I mean, we're all going to suffer on some level, for whatever reason. But if that suffering was spread out equally among everyone... Even the elite aristocrat D-bags who everyone loves to hate. If we could spread all that out among everybody, maybe we'd be better off. Of course, we have to define suffering. Because what you consider suffering, I may not. But that's a whole other conversation that doesn't need to be had right now. But hey, if you want to engage in this thought experiment yourself, click the link in the show notes. And when you get to the end and you read through the solutions, pay close attention to the way that they're worded. There's a great lesson in there as it relates to groupthink and sociopolitical systems and the way we try to problem solve. I think you'll get something out of this. And when you're done with that, engage with me. I'd love to hear what you came up with, what your number was on Twitter at OcultrePod or at Facebook.com slash OcultrePodcast. Let's be social. Now I'll be back in a few days with another full-length episode. But until then, enjoy your weekend and remember to love yourself Think for yourself and question it.